Lesson 41 is about adding and subtracting fractions with common denominators. Before you do this lesson, make sure you have completed investigation number four. Now, let's say you had a fraction like this, one-third. Remember, the top part of the fraction is called the numerator. The bottom is called the denominator. And any time you want to add or subtract fractions, they have to have a common denominator. Or, in other words, their denominators have to be the same. For example, one-third plus one-fourth, you cannot add those together. That will not work because they don't have common denominators. They don't have the same denominator. That's what common denominator means, the same denominator. Now, if you had one-third plus two-thirds, you could add that together. And the way you do that is you just add the two numbers in the numerator. One-third plus two-thirds is three-thirds. And now just think about fractions. One-third, let's just think about how much that would be. If we drew a circle out, that might be about one-third there. And two-thirds, that might be that other part. It would be that other part. And so we combine those together to get one whole. One, two, three-thirds. Three-thirds is a whole, so that equals one. Anytime you have the same numerator as you do the denominator, that just equals one. That's something real important to try to remember. Two over two is one. Four over four is one. Eight thousand over eight thousand is one. Anytime you have the same numerator as denominator, that just equals one. Because you have one whole section, right? Or one whole item. So anytime you add or subtract fractions, you just, you have to have common denominators. They both have to have the same denominator. And then you just add the numerators or subtract the numerators from each other. The denominator does not change. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Like this problem we just did, you wouldn't add the two denominators, three plus three, because then you would have ended up with three sixths. And I mean, we can clearly see from our picture, and that helps you understand this too, if you want to draw pictures, that we didn't end up with half of a circle. We ended up with a whole circle when we added a third of a circle and two-thirds of a circle. So when you're adding and subtracting fractions, not only do they have to have common denominators, but the only part that you do addition or subtraction on is the numerator. Remember that. Start remembering now that it's different for multiplication. But when you're adding and subtracting fractions, the only number that changes is the numerator part. You only add or subtract numerators. The denominator stays the same. Let's do a couple of practice problems now. I know I've probably said this a hundred times now, but I just want you to understand this. If you remember this now, then it'll eliminate a whole lot of mistakes. You, you'll add and subtract fractions for the rest of your schooling, the rest of your life, too. You'll always be doing things where you need to add and subtract fractions. You have to have common denominators. So in practice problem A, we do. We have a 5 for both of those denominators. And so we just add the numerators. 1 plus 3 is 4 over 5. 4 fifths. If we wanted to, we could make a picture to help us. Let's make some rectangles. Five rectangles. One fifth. One of those five. We can shade that in and then we add three more of the five. So we do one, two, three. And see now four of the five are shaded. So our answer is four fifths. Look at B. We have a subtraction problem here. Six sevenths minus three sevenths. So we do six minus three is three. Our denominator stays the same. Three sevenths. If we took three sevenths from six sevenths, we'd end up with three sevenths. Look at practice problem C. Now we have two mixed numbers that we're adding. And here's a hint. When you're adding mixed numbers or subtracting them, do the whole number part separately from the fraction part. So we let's look at our whole number part for both of these. We have a 2 and a 2 to add together. So that would be 4. And then we have a 2 thirds and a 1 thirds to add together. And so we can say plus 3 thirds. Now we just said that Anytime the numerator and denominator are the same, that's the same thing as saying one whole. You have all the parts shaded in. 
and that equals 1. And so we're really doing 4 plus 1, which is 5. So 2 and 2 thirds plus 2 and 1 thirds equals 5. Let's do one more. This is a subtraction problem. 9 and 1 eighths minus 3 and 1 eighths. Again, we do the whole number part separate from the fraction parts. So 9 minus 3 is 6, and then 1 eighth minus 1 eighth. Well, we're doing 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 over 8 is just 0, and so that's our answer, 6. Let's do one more subtraction problem. 4 and 5 eighths minus 2 and 1 eighth. Okay, so we do our whole number part separate. So we do 4 minus 2 is 2, and then we do 5 eighths minus 1 eighth. And we add that to the 2. We don't say 2 minus 4 eighths. It's just 2 and the 4 eighths part. So we always think of mixed numbers. We think of the whole number part and the fraction part. We always use that word and in there. And so we have 4 minus 2 is 2, and then we do the fraction part. 5 eighths minus 1 eighth is 4 eighths. 2 and 4 eighths. Okay, so I'll say this one more time. When you're adding and subtracting fractions, you add or subtract the numerators. You have to have common denominators. They both have to be the same number, and you don't add or subtract the denominators. You just leave it as it is. Okay, well that's all for lesson 41.